Hello, I'm Baron, and this is how to dog turn your human. You can see more of me and my rescue human's life together in his movie A New Book. My mother was German Shepherd, hence the accent, but I'm also part of Kita Chow and Border Kali. This is my roommate, he's just a mutt. I call him Talky since he can't bark. Not sure why people always make dog voices sound dopey. From my experiences, humans are the silly ones, which makes them harder to train, but here's what I've learned so far. Since he can't bark, I've tried teaching him some basic sign language that his tiny mind can process, such as body positions to let him know that I want something. I keep my food and water bowl close to where he keeps his food, so it's easy to remind him to keep my bowls full as he has the attention span of a flea. He seems to forget that I like his food too, and I have to watch him every step of the way. Block the kitchen as a first pass, watch him cooking, help him bring it inside, eat my food to remind him I'm hungry, and even stare at him while he eats. No idea why Taki thinks it's funny to tickle my paws, but I do get him back now and then, like when I have to check on him so he doesn't drown in the shower. I also have to remind Taki to shower me once in a while, but ugh, you reek dude. Would you lick yourself once in a while? Glad mine were removed if that's how they smell. My human doesn't always understand when I tell him I need to go outside, so I had him put a cowbell on the door that I can ring and let him know I need to go out. Humans are impossible to house train though. Sometimes he gives me false hope coming home late at night, but of course he still won't kick, but generally he just goes in the house, usually in the same place at least. Humans don't always have good sense of time and I have to remind Taki when he's been sitting too long and needs to get up and get outside for some vitamin D on his snout. Occasionally, Taki will actually learn things from me, even if I didn't teach him on purpose. He's even getting a gray muzzle like me too. It's our responsibility to make sure they exercise, and that means taking them out for a walk. I use a leash like this and make sure he's on the other end and doesn't get lost. I tried to get him to sniff around, but he just gawks up at the sky instead. I tried to set an example of living within my means. My income is minimal, but I get really excited over simple things like a walk or an empty peanut butter jar, unlike some people I know. He can't even get to the chopper. When I get in the car with my human, I have to keep an eye on him or who knows where we'll end up without me co-piloting. Humans are creatures of habit and routine, but we need to get them out for new experiences too. I've trained mine to paddle me around the lake, which is fun for both of us and good exercise for him. I also take him on trips to the mountains and beach at times to wear him out so he'll behave when we get back home. At least we both agree that playing with toys in the house is okay. Sometimes he frustrates me. I'm constantly following him as he keeps putting all the toys in one place. I have to go spread them around again like they're supposed to be. Some of his toys are annoying like the stringy box, which I can tolerate, but when he starts howling, it's worse than cat mating season. Sometimes my human gets grouchy. I'm not sure why as he just sits around all day while I do all the work protecting the house, but I try to get him outside as I know how much he enjoys my zoomies. I guide him around and cheer him up, and he takes care of me when my foot or ears hurt to keep me out of the vet's office. Sometimes I'd like him to taste the back of my paw for getting in my muzzle. It's bedtime, dude. Maybe if you'd show a girl this much attention, you'd actually get a second date. He's a big dumb animal, but he's mine. I think I'll keep him. Subscribe to my YouTube channel below and let's celebrate turning fuel and air into adrenaline.